Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for August 25th, 2022. back to the simple cyber defense in this week's episode we're going to be talking about antiviruses and my personal opinions on if you should have one or not this will go over the linux mac and windows variants so without further ado let's begin i want to start off by saying i apologize for the lack of episodes coming out um there was a there's been a uh, scheduling conflict between myself and I also ended up getting COVID. I'm fully recovered, and so hopefully we can get a med back here soon and we can uh, get our schedules aligned and get some more episodes out for you. So in the meantime, we're going to be talking about, or I'm going to be talking about uh, antiviruses, and there are many YouTubers out there that have their opinions on antiviruses, so I'm going to give my opinions on this, whether you should have one or not, and the first thing we're going to start with is the Linux camp. Overall, I think Linux does not need any antiviruses. And the reason why I'm saying this isn't because I'm not saying that there aren't any viruses out there for Linux, but there are plenty of them out there. Uh, it's just that most Linux users are tinkerers. They know how to compile code from scratch. They know mostly the ins and outs of it. Um, you do have your novice novice Linux people out there, but they're willing to get their hands dirty and be able to get into the source codes if they need to. And mostly with Linux, you get into trouble with repos. Now, repos are basically a kind of like a bucket of all the software that goes into being able to download and install and as long as you do not install untrusted repos into your uh, Linux distribution you're going to be fine so just stick with the trusted sources and then the next part of it is just randomly executing codes through the command terminal this is a bad idea pretty much learn what each of the commands are being used for if you don't know them study them because there's lots of information out there on the internet and there's no excuse to not know what a command terminal line does and as long as you are careful which command lines you run, you will avoid many of the viruses out there too. And then the third part with it is if you do have a packaged uh, application installer, again, make sure that it comes from a trusted source and not just randomly downloading uh, files on the internet and just installing them that's just a bad idea all around so with that said that's pretty much what the linux part it's just watch out for your repos make sure you know what command lines are running and what they are doing and just don't run random already compiled software without knowing what the source is so now we move on to the mac portion of it and things get a little bit on the gray side because again there are many viruses out there for mac not as much as windows because of the users um and again i don't really think that macs really need viruses just mostly because, again, if you're very careful about what you install on your Mac machine, Apple has been really good at keeping 
viruses to a very minimal and not having a lot of exploits known and when they are known they kind of patch them out really quick so again max and linux just like linux i don't really think they really need a antivirus as long as you're very careful about what you install on your machine so with that said now we move on to the last one which is the windows side of things and here's where it's like the wild wild west <laughs> There's many different ways to get viruses put onto your machine. And for that, there are basically two camps that you can go into. One is just running the stock default Windows, def uh, the Windows Security Suite which has the firewall, the antiviruses, and many other tools in there to kind of help you become safer online. The downside of using that is you're heavily relying on Microsoft's telemetry and data collection to be able to have such a robust antivirus software. Another thing that is discussed around the internet is not only are it's the Windows Defenders and Windows Antiviruses are a lot of privacy concerns, but there are some potential security concerns because one particular YouTuber called uh, Chris Titus goes over many of the, I would say, kind of like the downsides of the antivirus kind of thing, where many code manufacturers who make codes and programs for Windows are required to have a particular digital signatures attached to each of their softwares. Well, in order to get those signatures, you have to pay a certain amount of money to get those certificates to be able to install or attach into your software and say, yes, this is not malicious. And a lot of those certificates kind of run into control of Microsoft and how they dictate what certificates you need, how you need it done, and that's pretty much the biggest reason why Defender is so good at, at it is because if it doesn't see these particular certificates, it basically just just gives you a big warning saying this is not trusted, be very careful. And that could be good for the majority average users who don't really pay much of attention and don't really care about the telemetry data collection. Because face it, if you are using Windows OS, either you fall into the camp of you have to do it for work or you just don't care about the data collection. So if you're fall into the camp of like, well, I don't care what data Microsoft has on me, then by all means stick with the default Microsoft Defender and you'll be really good. Again, you also have to be very cautious about what, that doesn't mean you can't be wildly downloading everything. You still have to be very careful about what you download and which websites you go to and etc. And if you are using Windows Defender, it it's good enough for what you need it for. Just remember there's going to be some privacy concerns and some shady business deals going on. And if you're okay with that, just use Defender. So now we ro roll into the next camp of people who don't really want to 
deal with Defender or don't really trust Defender. So it's to install a third-party application. And there are many different antiviruses out there. Some free, some paid. But then you run into the problem if you're not paying for the product, then you are the product. So I would pretty much stay away from most of the free antiviruses out there. Some of them, like AVG, have gotten into trouble with many of their data collection practices and pretty much just stay away from free if you don't want to use Defender. If you can't afford a premium antivirus, then I would say just stick with Windows Defender or just get away from Windows altogether. Um, so then the next question comes in, which paid version of anti-software, the antivirus software you need? Pretty much stick with kind of like the lower tier budget because most of the higher end premium plus subscriptions that cost an arm and a leg really do basically the same thing as their entry level anti-soft uh, software blocking and all that uh, the best one i found is bitdefender this anti software antivirus software is very good at what it does and it does put a lot of other extra protections on on your computer so i would recommend highly bitdefender now they do offer other products but i would stick with them for the antivirus and then if you want like a vpn and other security tools you're pretty much better off getting a VPN from somewhere else, from another trusted platform that's not free. And same with the other tools. You don't want to put all your security tools in one company because one, you're you're run the risk of if that one company that has these multiple softwares have a vulnerability a lot of times that vulnerability will be across all of their different softwares. So if they find one in their antivirus, most likely they'll have one in their VPN and one in their password manager and one in this and that and the other. So the best thing to do is have multiple different companies handle different parts of your data so that if one gets compromised, it doesn't compromise everything. And another thing is, if you have your data all in one basket, it's easier for attackers to attack that company and grab all of your data versus having pieces here and there and everywhere. It's much harder for the, the attacker to attack multiple companies and get all that data stitched together. So, with that said, I know this is pretty short, but to recap, Linux and Mac, I would say, not needed for for antiviruses. And Windows, I recommend it highly. You have the choice of either doing the Windows Defender Security Suite or a third party. That choice is up to you. But just remember that there are trade-offs for either side that you go to. And with that said, hopefully with the next episode, we will have a mod back and we will be back to our normal schedule. So hopefully you will stick around and see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates. Join us next time when we dive into more security issues and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Plus, if you have a topic suggestion or want to support the podcast, stop by our website at simplecyberdefense.com.